Hey guys, Kane here. So a while has passed since the last emblem video I have made and I think it was more or less the only emblem video I ever made. This topic can vary for different people depending on their server or the places they use the units at. As some units can use at least two or three sets of emblems while some others one set is vastly superior from many others. And of course, we're talking about the path of the assassin emblem. Whenever it came to our servers, it in a sense broke our game entirely. Most if not all of the events and even PvP. It is more or less the best emblem for most damage dealers that are able to dish out instant damage or high damage in general. For example, Devil, Naga, Red Dragon and quite a few others. This emblem is overpowered powered for these few units, however this emblem can still be used for something like even Judicator, Vyvern and even some tanks like Black Dragon for them to start doing decent amounts of damage. In Vyvern's case there are a few people who prefer to use some different types of emblems but from what I heard it's about 50-50. The reason for this emblem taking over this game is more or less the 600 crit value early on which is more than any unit can have from their basic stats in which talents and even artifact effects add up and then 240 penetration. This penetration as many of us assume directly removes 240 defense from the units. I myself have no clue whether or not this performs this way but the backliners take a huge amount of damage while the frontline doesn't take as much. So we can more or less assume that it is for sure has to do something with a unit's defense because backliners have about a thousand or less. This is the best emblem in this game and may remain the best for the next half a year to a year unless something changes and a new more overpowered emblem is added to this game. For many other units it depends what the unit itself does. For example, are their skills important to you? Can it survive for long? Does it die if anything sneezes? What happens if someone counters you? Does it get instantly deleted? And so on. It all comes down to your formation and synergy and not only emblems. So for example, I can use my own units. Devil and Nefriti is self-explanatory in terms of emblem choice. Pitfin, she heals quite a lot with her trigger and after her awaken she heals even more. The reason for me not putting everlasting here is because all of her other skills are not that really good as I only need Pitfin for her healing ability and Anger would increase her healing skill by 4 levels. Pretty simple right? Moving towards Imp and yes I kinda do use Imp in my formation for the time being. It can easily tank decked out devils with 3 star awaken and cast at assassin emblems. The reason for that is the awaken skill choices where Imp would revive with 50% chance. It also has a lot of dodge and even more dodge than demon so with the buffs from Efriti's shield, nightmare, pitfin healing he has a lot of tanky stats and the only stat Imp is missing is tenacity. Thus why I added successors legal principles giving this 9x unit almost all tanky stats that the game can give. Keep in mind my imp is 6 star awaken and potential is fully maxed so I am unsure how well it performs without these. Demon is a similar case like imp just that it has less dodge but is a 4x unit. Though instead of reviving it kinda heals but he's not that good of a tank. I mainly use him because of the buffs from Imp, Nightmare, Efriti, Devil under Xeron and Pitfin's healing. Break this chain here and Demon is benched immediately. Now for Nightmare, he is one of those units where you can put a tanky emblem and make it survive or you put everlasting and it buffs his own defensive stats by a little but also buffs your entire field by a bit more. Since Nightmare is part of my Devil skill line I prefer it being a buffer of sorts to buff more damage and reduction for the inferno on my field since most of the things in front of the kill line die in seconds. Beholder 
This is not even close to being proper emblems, I just don't have another proper set to replace this with. So I just put this here in case enemy devil would jump on beholder and maybe need an additional attack on it. Still better than fielding this unit naked without any emblems. Suggested to use something like everlasting as it helps more for it being a debuffer and reduce more mana from the enemy hero. Bone dragon is not a DPS probably in most formations that is not Necropolis. So you want to use Everlasting for more damage reduction buffs to make your own field do more damage. Manticore, I use Darkness Enlightenment on mine because sometimes I swap Bone for Manticore, depending on the enemy or what the enemy fields. Some people use Everlasting on Manticore so he would have higher skills, higher buffs or debuffs. I prefer Darkness to remove more flat damage reduction from tanks, and that is the bane of Xeron's formation, that is the tanks. If devil gets stuck, the battle is over. In some other formation people even use witness, which increases Manticore's attack speed. I would assume that reason being for faster debuffs with his own normal attacks, so he would stack faster, but I have not tested the emblem and I do not know whether he needs to entirely kill the target or he just needs to hit it even once and anyone else can kill it. This may be something I may test in the future, as I think most of these emblems that I have shown are pretty much solid for these few units, except of course the Beholder which I will be working on. When it comes to many other units, you need to see who you are facing and what are their stats, how will it benefit from the emblem, for example if you have two fortress units and you put an emblem that would increase damage or damage reduction percent for every same faction unit deployed, it will perform a lot worse than just putting another more useful force set emblem. As this game goes and more features are released, many things can change from just a single patch note, so you need to plan a little ahead and visualize what your formation should look like. Now when it comes to the stats on the emblems themselves, the damage dealers have to have the core damage stats, which are holy emblem attack and attack amplification percent. There is no exceptions unless the three stats below this are all DPS. I doubt it will perform better than most. Holy emblem attack increases all the damage that your unit does. That means any skill damage, basic attack and even aura damage and so on. Attack amplification percent increases your unit's attack which in turn slightly increases your skill damage too. This is not the same as attack percent as 1% attack amplification will increase your current attack by like almost 1%. As an example, if you have 400,000 attack, it will add somewhere from 3,000 to 4,000 attack, whereas a 4% attack buff would add like 600 on these numbers or something like that. So this attack amplification stat is a must have for most if not all DPS. Similar things go for tanks and supports as well. Those supports who do not do damage, you want to have tanky stats in terms terms of holy emblem defense and HP amplification percent, so they can survive the onslaught of any high burst insane DPS. And only then you may look at the stats below these two. Yes, I understand that you cannot always get these and get them reliably, you do not need to stress over it, eventually you will get them and make the good sets. It just takes time, so do not sweat too much in regards to this. When it comes to perfect emblems, it depends on what unit you are buying them for and how long you are looking to use it for. For my own example, Devil's unit damage and crit damage makes his current damage skyrocket, but something like unit damage and attack speed would be a lot better if you are looking towards the future, for the reasons of entire fields being mostly 1x units. They won't take insane damage from skills but still take insane huge amounts of damage from basic attacks. Since this perfect emblem costs about 40,000 diamonds in value or 25 lucky snatches total if you're doing it free, it is something that you also need to plan a little ahead to not diminish yourself too much. My own emblems provide me arena ranks, 
Clash of Gods and even Battle of the Gods rankings and other events as top scores. So more or less I can say they already have paid for themselves or are paying me for the value I spent them for. You have to more or less look at it in this way. There are emblems such as King's Calamity, Ancient Fire, Arrogance, Jealousy and a few others that are always overlooked but with the Assassin emblems performing so good and are reliable for most DPS, I suppose that is the choice for many players sticking with assassin emblems more because they can be put on almost any damage dealing unit for it to increase in its damage while many other emblems are situational and not even close to good for many other units. Anyways that's pretty much for this video, I remember I made one a long time ago but I guess this should be some up to date emblem guide. Thanks for watching and stay safe.